Ask for money and get advice. Ask for advice, get money twice. He's a best selling author and the world's number one trainer for entrepreneurship and network marketing. It's time to go pro with Eric Worre. Welcome to Go Pro with Eric Worre. And how many of you have ever heard of Rich Dad, Poor Dad? One of the most iconic books in business and entrepreneurship. My friend Robert Kiyosaki wrote that book many years ago, and it sold, I think, something like 40 million copies around the world. It's been wildly successful. It's helped to transform so many people and how they think about entrepreneurship and what they need to do to take charge of their lives. I traveled recently to Phoenix, Arizona, where Robert has his offices. And I sat down with Robert to talk to him specifically about network marketing. He's an expert in entrepreneurship. I wanted to find out his thoughts about entrepreneurship in network marketing. So with no further ado, let's get right into the conversation with Robert Kiyosaki. Robert, Thank you for uh, allowing us to come to your office. Thank you. Sit down and have a conversation about uh, what's going on in the world, what's going on in economics, what's going on in employment and jobs. Um, you wrote this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, uh, in addition to the business school for people who like helping people and the business of the 21st century and many other best-selling books. Um, what's the premise of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Well, Rich Dad, Poor Dad is a true story about my two fathers. My real dad, the poor dad, was a school teacher. In fact, he was the head of education for the state of Hawaii, you know, a PhD, very smart man, academically really good man, hardworking, honest. But as you know, our schools teach us nothing about money except to go to school, get a job, work for a paycheck, save money, get out of debt, and invest in a 401k, which is ridiculous bad advice financially. Whereas my rich dad was my best friend's father and he was a guy who started with nothing but he was an entrepreneur. So starting from the age of nine, my rich dad started teaching me about money, very simply playing Monopoly. You know, so I'm playing Monopoly with my rich dad. I said, why are we playing this game? And he says, well, one of the formulas, many formulas for wealth, one great form of wealth is on Monopoly. I said, what is it? He says, four greenhouses, one red hotel. I went, what? He says, yeah, that's all you need to do. Four greenhouses, one red hotel. I said, well, why am I in school? You know, if that's all it takes to be rich. He says, no, I should stay in school. So I stayed in school. And then ultimately what happened to my poor dad is my poor dad ran for governor, lieutenant governor of the state of Hawaii, where I'm, where I'm from, and he lost. And um, when he lost, the governor said to my dad, uh, you'll never work in the state again. So here's my dad, he's 50 years old, PhD, and he can't find a job. So this is 1973. I come back from Vietnam. I was a Marine pilot in Vietnam fighting for my country. And my old man can't find a job. So he's like 50 and I'm 25, you know. And I said, Dad, what advice do you have for me? And he says, go back to school, get your master's degree, get your PhD, and work for the government. I said, Dad, I'd rather go back to Vietnam. <laughs> it's more honest. And then he wanted to become a pilot. You know, I said, once you fly for the airlines, and I said, I'm done with flying. And I also have a license. I sell for Standard Oil of California on their tankers. He said, why don't you go back for Standard Oil? I said, I don't want to be an employee anymore, Dad. I've had it. You know, he goes, he was just shocked. And because my rich dad explained to me that uh, employees, anybody who needs a paycheck, this is my rich dad, anytime you need a paycheck, you're being, uh, you know what, uh, you know, it's not good. He says, you sell your soul, you sell your time, you sell your emotions, you sell your body for money. And if you look at the greatest entrepreneurs like Steve Jobs, you know how much his paycheck was? One dollar. And, and most people should say, well, why is that? What's the difference between an employee and an entrepreneur? And one big difference is that paycheck. So ladies and gentlemen, if you need a paycheck, you're in the wrong, something's wrong. Something is wrong. You've sold something. And so that's why I'm in, I'm in financial education. I do my best to teach people to become financially free and free of needing a paycheck. 
You know, once you can do that, we can, we can solve many problems in our world today. But m many people don't have time to solve our world's problems because they need a paycheck. So I think the paychecks, you know, basically a paycheck is paid slavery. That's how I see it. All right, so <clears throat> you've taken a look at what's going on in the world. Right. Specifically here in the United States. What is the state of the economic condition for the average American, the average worker? What's going on? Uh, because a lot of things have changed in the last 10 years. Right. The, the biggest change is that we're no longer in the industrial age. We're now in the information age. So in the industrial age, it made sense to go to school, get a job, work hard, and save money, and retire. You know, Those days are gone. But we're still telling the kids the same thing. Go to school, get a job, work hard, save money, and invest in a 401k. You're obsolete. So, you know, I wrote this book here years and years ago, I think in 2004, it's called The Business School. It's for the network marketing industry. Because network marketing industry is the industry of the future. And then this book came out, wrote this one too, it's called Business of the 21st Century. So network marketing is a very important industry because network marketing has the potential to save the United States and the world because it's gonna teach people not to be employees, but to be entrepreneurs. So I, I think our country was founded on an entrepreneurial spirit. That's right. And it was called the American dream. The American dream. You even go back 100 years ago, most people worked for themselves. They were farmers or they were blacksmiths or they right. were whatever. They, 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 they found a trade and they worked to build their little business. Yeah. And then this idea of the corporation came around and all of a sudden, uh, all the, the schools were taking these children and, and trying to they were fit them into the- farmers right. and turning them into employees. Turning them into employees. And that's gone for about 100 years. And now it seems to me that it's, it's reaching its limits, especially with, with the rise of technology, minimizing the need for these employees. It's so bad. And now there's a, a, a new age of entrepreneurialism is starting to happen. Are you seeing that people are waking up to this, the, the entrepreneurial spirit again? Yes, and what I'm happy about is sometimes I think I was born 40 years too early, you know, because when I was an entrepreneur, I started the first nylon and Velcro surfer wallet business and all that. And when, when the newspaper said I was an entrepreneur, my poor dad said, oh my God, that's terrible. I said, why is that, dad? He says, Entrepreneurs mean you're a crook. You know, I'm going, and that's the problem with school teachers. You know, school teachers, most of them are good, very good people. 80% are dedicated teachers, 20% you know, should not be teachers. But, but they still have this idea that the love of money is the root of all evil. But they never reviews their paychecks. You know, they all, most of them belong to the teachers union, they want more money. But they all, no, no, I, I'm not working for money, I'm school teachers. No, you're working for a paycheck, tell the truth. And every time somebody says, you know, like, well, I want to pay raise, what that does for the technology guys, they take, you know, the, you know I go to the supermarket today, I don't need a checkout clerk anymore, I just, I can scan by myself. So every time a person says, I want more money, unemployment goes up because technology will replace them. I remember my, I had to, you know, there's a guy who used to fill my gas before, now I have to fill my own gas. So this idea of job security and information age is so obsolete but it's still taught inside our school system. And that's where the problem starts. There's no financial education in school system and people are still trained to be employees to work for that paycheck. So if people are going to decide, they say, let's see the viewers of whoever's watching this is saying, okay, fine. I, I buy into this idea of being an entrepreneur. I like that idea. I've, I maybe thought it was for other people, not for me, because I've, I've <laughs> been trained to be an employee, but they like the idea. They basically have four options, as I see it. One is they could buy an existing business. They could buy a franchise, yeah. Yeah, or, or, or just a, yeah, some business, business right? Yeah, you go to, it's called a business broker. You go to a business broker, they have these big books, and all these business books, it's like, you know, it's like buying a used car. You know? and, and there's a reason why somebody's selling it, typically, right? So, because most of them aren't making any money, that's why. <laughs> so buying a business, number one, buying a franchise, number two, start something from scratch. And McDonald's franchise starts with a million bucks. Right. And you may not get selected because it's like, it's like going to Harvard, you know, to work for McDonald's or buy a franchise, you have to be really, really up there. What's the next one? Next one is start something from scratch. Come up with your own idea, yeah, your nine own out, investment. Nine, nine out of 10 of those fail. Why? Well, there's a lot of reasons, but uh, one of the reasons is because 
a business is a team sport. Like I have to have accountants, I have to have engineers, I have to have system designers, I have to have sales, marketing, I have to have accounting, I have to have admission statements, I have to have legal and all that. The average Joe Schmo, even me, I go out there, I don't have the skills to, to put a business together. So what happens is you could be the smartest, let's say, uh, accountant, but you'll still fail because you still need marketing, you still need legal, you still need all this stuff. So our schools pump out specialists, and they're important, you know, marketing specialists or a web specialist. But an entrepreneur is a generalist. A generalist must have eight different skill sets. You don't have them on your own, so that's why it's a team comes together. Most people don't have a team. Most people hang out with other employees. It's a tragedy. You know, my father was a school teacher. All of his friends were school teachers, and they wonder why they were going broke all the time. You know, birds of a feather go broke together. <laughs> it's terrible. Whereas my rich dad, I would, as a little kid, and I'd go to Saturday morning meetings, and at these meetings, he had his banker, he had his attorneys, he had his accountants, he had his engineers, he had his uh, human resource guys. It was this big team. So as a kid, I saw business as a team sport, whereas in school, it's an individual sport. You know, in school, if you cooperate, it's called cheating. You know, I was very cooperative at test time. You know, I so, said, hey, what's the answer? <laughs> you know, but in real life, we cheat according to the school system because I ask my accountant for answers, my attorneys for answers, my product design guys for answers. You know, I don't have to be the smartest guy. But in school, you have to be the smartest. You're the, you're the, you're the, you're the, you're the army of one. You know what I mean? Give me a break. You know, in business, you have to be a generalist surrounded by very smart specialists. And network marketing provides those specialties for you. Right, let's talk about that. You because don't have to pay for them, they're already there. <laughs> right. What so, a deal that is. Right, so, so the, the, the first four options for entrepreneurs are one, buy an existing business, two, buy a franchise, three, start a business from scratch, or four, be an investor, invest in real estate, invest in whatever. These are entrepreneurial choices. All four of those either require special skills or a lot of money in order to be able to get into. And the fifth one is investing into a network marketing business. Right. Uh, for the average person, why is that such a good decision in comparison to the other choices, at least to start? Well, because our schools don't even train us to be good investors. They tell us to be mutual fund investors, which is the, the worst possible investment possible. But I say, I'm in mutual funds, I have a 401k, you know. It's the worst if you know the if you know if you know investing, but what happens for most people is you want to start small, so you want to keep your full time day job, and you want to start a part time business in network marketing. It gives you two things: low entry cost, but most important, the most important thing is you get the training. As my friend Donald Trump and I say, we see network marketing as a business school for future entrepreneurs. So you get the development, the training. You're not there to get rich quick, you know? You know, I, I was saying it earlier is that my last business, it took me five years to develop before I made any money on it. Most people can't survive five weeks, much less five years. So you start a part-time business in network marketing, immediately taxes go on to your favor. You have tax breaks. Your employee, you don't get those tax breaks. But then you have these great teachers and the systems are already there. You don't have to hire the attorneys, you don't have to hire the accounts, the product designers, the internal systems, that they're already there for you. So all you have to do is learn to be an entrepreneur. So like I said, I'm not a good accountant, I'm not a good attorney, I'm not a good engineer, but I can hire those guys. After you have got the skills of actually learning how to be an entrepreneur, you don't have to be a specialist, be a good entrepreneur. You get two things, experience and money. It takes experience and money. Because I know, I see a lot of people come to me in my world, they have a lot of money, but have no experience. And what happens is they lose all their money because of no experience. So network marketing is the perfect, I don't care if you're already rich, I don't care if you have a high paying job, you're coming there for education and experience, and that takes time. So like the last, the last investment I bought with Kim, it was uh, $6 million, okay? We're not gonna see an, a dime back 
for another five years. You know, this is not get rich quick. So it's going to be five years before we have any money come in, but we have to build the business. What it is is a nice, beautiful resort. You know, we have to build the business back up. The business starts throwing cash flow off of it. And when a business is throwing cash flow, its value goes up. That's what entrepreneurs do. So pretend I'm a person that does, knows nothing about network marketing. If you were to just say, here's what network marketing is, how would you describe it? I'd say it's a business school for future entrepreneurs. But what does it do? I mean, you know, what, what is the function of it? It, teach, it? Look, a kid, you know, a baby's crawling and it stands and falls, stands and falls, stands and falls. That's true learning. So that's true education. You stand and you fall, you stand and you fall, and then one day the kid stands. Next is run. <laughs> then it's bicycle. You know, that's real learning. But in school system, when a kid stands, bam, they punish him for falling. So the kid doesn't ever stand up again because they're so afraid of falling. That's why it's called rich spirit. The most important thing about network marketing is you rebuild that spirit. You look at most corporations, you make a mistake, you're fired. So people are afraid to take risks, they're afraid to be creative, they're afraid of saying I'm afraid, they're afraid to say I might lose my job, and the spirit dies, it atrophies, you know, it just turns into a little rotten pear, it just dies on people. So the most important job in network marketing is to rebuild your spirit and the other people's spirit. And if you do that, you'll be successful. But if you're trying to get rich quick, you probably won't be successful. The other thing that's beautiful about network marketing is it's designed to expand. You see, most businesses, let's say I start a hamburger stand, it's not designed to expand. But network marketing, the, the structure of it is designed to expand. So you just do that one thing, it'll keep expanding. You don't need a, you don't need a McDonald's franchise, your business will keep expanding. What I say to people in network marketing, your job is rehabilitate the spirit, the entrepreneur spirit in all of us. You know, get it back. Damn it, you know, we're training, our schools train people to be high paid employees, executives who rip and steal from our country. They rip us off, I mean, most like, attorneys and accountants, they don't care about you, they just wanna take their fees. They don't care if you succeed or not, but you've gotta care, your spirit has gotta come back. And so that's why it is to rehabilitate the entrepreneurial spirit of this country and the world. It is our most important job today because we killed the spirit. Go to school, get a job, and save money, invest in a 401k. How stupid is that? Yeah. Hmm. You've got to be generous in network marketing. In business, you can be greedy. You cannot be greedy in this business. You have to be generous. Those are spiritual things. You have to help your fellow human being. That's spiritual. In the, in the, in the dog-eat-dog -dog world of corporate business, screw your partner, screw them, screw your competition. That's not spiritual, that's mean-spirited. So it really is, when I say, what do you have to do? That's really the rich spirit. You have to be able to rehabilitate the spirit of us, the people. Because if we don't do that, we're finished anyway. One of my favorite quotes of yours is, don't work for a paycheck. <laughs> no. Well, that one too. I like that. But one of my favorite quotes talking about the value of the network is wealthy people look for and build networks. Yeah. Everybody else just looks for work. What, why is, what, what's the big difference there? Uh, why do, do wealthy people uh, recognize the value of networks? And what are the value of networks? Well, just listen, it's called a radio network, a television network, you know, a service station network because it's cooperative. This is what I'm trying to say about my poor dad, my rich dad. My poor dad is a PhD. I often joke, you know, he's a very smart guy. He was a valedictorian. Every you know, six kids in his family, three were valedictorians. My father graduated from university in two years, top of his class. You know, he didn't. He went to Stanford, University of Chicago, Northwestern. But I would say PhD stood for poor, helpless, and desperate. You know, because they're so highly specialized, and then they don't cooperate because it's cheating. You know. I cheat like crazy. I mean, I'm very cooperative building networks. So my father comes out, he's highly specialized. Nobody can hire him because who needs an educational specialist in most corporations? They don't. He couldn't find a job. And then he thought cooperating and building networks was cheating. On top of that, he thought the love of money is the root of all evil. And I'm going, that's what they teach in school. And that the smarter you are, the more money you should make. That's not the way it works. It's the person with the entrepreneurial skills makes the most money. That's why our, our richest people in America today are entrepreneurs. 
Walt Disney dropped out of school. Henry Ford dropped out of school. Thomas Edison dropped out of school. Uh, Richard Branson, a virgin, dropped out of school. Steve Jobs dropped out of school. Uh, Bill Gates dropped out of school. Zuckerberg dropped out of school. I mean, when are we, we going to get it? Do you know? And you're going to school to work for a paycheck. But if you want to be rich, be an entrepreneur. And network marketing gives you the spirit to be an entrepreneur. Then you can get the education. How does building a network and thinking about network uh, provide you with leverage in your life financially? Well, you think about the cell phone, you know. Every time somebody uses one, there's millions of people using one every single minute of the day. That's how they get rich. Whereas the doctor is working for himself. You know, doctors are very important. Lawyers are very important. Dentists are very important. But they don't have a network. You know, they're self-employed. Look at the taxes here. Let me show you these taxes, okay? If you're an employee, you only pay about 40% in taxes. You're self-employed like a doctor, you're gonna pay about 60% in taxes. Actually, 72% in California. Business owners like me, I might pay 20%. But as an investor, I pay 0%. I'll be like, oh, that's not fair. That's not fair. Well, that's, that's what most school teachers say because they don't know how to be business owners and investors. And what network marketing is training people to be is to be on the B and the I side and people who go to school are on the E and the S side. And you need all of us. I, mean, I need my employees. I need my doctors. I need my lawyers. I need my accountants. I just don't want to be one of them. I'd rather be on the B and the I side. So the beauty of network marketing it is training you to think on the B and the I side, not the E and the S side. The E and the S side is my poor dad, and the B and the I side is my rich dad. So the choice is up to you. Explain how it's 0% tax. That takes a little bit of time, but this is really strange for most people. The more generous you are, the less tax you pay. You see, the more selfish you are, the highest tax you pay. So if you save money, you'll pay high tax. 401k, you'll pay the highest of taxes. It's really strange. But capitalism is really designed for generous people. Communism and socialism is for greedy people. And, and as you know, there's a lot of greedy people who make a lot of money today, but they pay a lot of tax. Interesting. You see, I, I don't have one house. You know, most people that go to school, they have a house. I have 4,500 houses I rent out. So the more houses, housing I provide, the less tax I pay, because the government wants me to pay, provide housing. I also provide, you know, I went to school to be a ship's officer in, oil, in the oil industry. So my specialty is oil. So I have several hundred oil wells, and because I drill for oil, the government gives me tax breaks for it. I mean, zero tax, a lot of tax breaks. But if I consume oil, I pay tax. You see, the more generous you are, the tax laws are really written for generous entrepreneurs. But for greedy E's and S's, you pay the highest taxes. Go figure that one out. Interesting. Yeah. So what I like to tell people is that if you have, network parking isn't for everyone, being an entrepreneur isn't for everyone. But if you have an well, entrepreneur- thank God, because somebody has to do some work. <laughs> right. If you have an entrepreneurial bone in your body, though, if you've decided that being an entrepreneur is better, network marketing, while it's not perfect, it's better well, for the I, average person. I, I always want to think like what is perfect. You know, in school, they, they say there's a straight line. But if you look in the real world of physics, there's never been a straight line everywhere. When somebody says you walk the straight and walk the straight and narrow, that's really academic thinking. It's not real thinking. See, my poor dad, an academic, you know, he couldn't face the real world. When he lost his job, no, there was no use for him. What use do you have for a school teacher outside the school system? Not much, you know. So I hate to say that, but that's why they, they have labor unions. They fight like crazy for more and more pay, and they do less and less work. And I don't blame them, but it's actually it's not capitalism. Capitalism is really employing people and employing other people's money. That's what you're supposed to do. And that's what network marketing teaches. And what we need today are more capitalists and we need more entrepreneurs. We have too many employees. And God knows we have too many attorneys. You know what I mean? So let's cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, if network marketing is so good, why is it so misunderstood? Well, because most people who went to school become employees. I didn't understand network marketing at first either, you know, because. I didn't understand why I need to be an entrepreneur because I already 
was born an entrepreneur. I mean, I was trained to be an entrepreneur. I started my own companies. I understand taxes. I understand investing. I didn't go to traditional schools. You know, I mean, I, I have a bachelor of science degree, which stands for BS, but I don't, you know, I, I have other skill sets. So I didn't understand it. And then a friend of mine who was a CPA signed up for network marketing. And I said, hey, why'd you do that? He's in Texas. And he said, well, because I need to teach other people to be entrepreneurs. And that's when I kind of got it. I went, oh my God. So I really, you know, school's important. We need accountants, we need attorneys, we need auto mechanics, we need truck drivers, but we also need entrepreneurs. So once I, once I realized that network marketing was training people to be entrepreneurs, people did not need a paycheck, people not trying to get rich quick, then I was on board. So it took me a while to understand that network marketing is really a development program for people who want to be real entrepreneurs. Do you think people in network marketing sometimes do themselves a disservice yeah. by painting the picture too yeah, they, rosy? They talk about money. Oh, look how rich I am. Let, let me, you know, I, I, have, I have my three Ferraris and all that, but I, I'm not flaunting them, you know? But they talk about getting rich and people do get rich. Like I have a friend who put her husband through medical school by being a network marketer. So she just made enough money so that he could go through med school, then she quit and she was happy. Now that her husband's a doctor, they pay high taxes. But anyway, they're quite happy with that, but that served her purpose. She didn't really see it as training other people to be entrepreneurs. And that's what I'm trying to say. To be really, really successful, to be spiritually rich, you must be generous. You must be kind. You must have compassion for your fellow human being. That's a rich spirit. You know, and of course you can make money by cheating people, screwing them, killing them. That's not your choice. I choose rather to be a teacher, to help my fellow human being. You know, my, you met my wife and she didn't marry me for my money because I didn't have any, but she has the biggest heart. You know, she just wants to not give people money, but teach them, you know, like you don't give people fish, you teach them to fish. So really that's the spirit of a rich spirit. It's not screwing your fellow human beings, screwing your competition. That's old school, you know, that's gotta stop pretty soon. Yeah, some people in network marketing, I think, are so uh, misguided that they're, they're trying to get people instead of trying to help people. They're, they're hunting instead of you said, farming. You said it better than me. And they lure them with, oh, get rich quick, get rich quick. And when they don't get rich quick because they've come to supplement their paycheck, they quit. Now, I think if you're upfront with people and you say, this is a process, it generally takes about five years. So just show up. Don't pressure them to do what they can't do and all this. And as their spirit gets stronger, you have a better chance of making it. You and I know in network marketing and in real life, if you work with a hundred people, five might make it. Right? Yeah, Some, then, so others are just gonna use the product or whatever. Yeah, and then next year you'll have five more people. Well, that's 10. And then year three, you have 15. And that's really a network. So you're working to build a network of other entrepreneurs, people who get the picture. And as your network increases, your wealth goes up. That's true spirit of being rich. You made other people rich. You've got to make other people rich if you want to be rich. You cannot make yourself rich and screw everybody else. And that's what they're teaching in business schools. You know, I was in the MBA program. I lasted like nine months. And finally I realized this is not for me. I really dropped out when they told me they were trying to teach me in, in the business school how to fill out a resume. I went, what? You know, this is, they're, they're teaching entrepreneurship, but they teach how to fill a resume. I said, I don't want a resume. I don't want a paycheck. I don't want to screw my friends, you know? That's not me. I'm not here to beat, you know, I'm not here Coke versus Pepsi or Ford versus General Motor. I want to help my fellow human beings come up. And that is really a rich spirit. And that's why I love network marketing. But as you know, a lot of people give it a bad name because it's about getting rich quick. And you can if you want, but that's not, what I, that's not why I support it. Now, if a person starts for a large company and they've, they've got their big organizational chart, okay, usually looks something like this. And they start at the absolute bottom for a you know, Fortune 500 company. And they want to get to CEO. What do they have to go through to get there? I don't know, it's, it's not, um, I'm a former Marine, okay? 
Marines do not hire CEOs. Do you know what I mean? You don't find a Navy guy commandant of the Marine Corps. We develop our own leaders. You know, the same as the Air Force. In the military, we develop our own leaders. In corporate America, the odds are your CEO will come from outside your company. That if you start off as sales managers, you don't have a chance of making CEO. They're going to bring them in because they went to Harvard or Stanford, and that's you don't have a prayer. So network marketing is like the Marine Corps. You know, we develop from within. We develop our own leaders. And that's the way it should be. So if you're in corporate America, the odds are they're going to hire somebody from outside because they want new ideas. They're not going to develop you. Yeah, and, and you have to go through the politics. Oh, well, yeah. there's politics everywhere, but you know what I mean? But the, the point here is this. What's, what's your odds? Not good. See, in network marketing, you can start at the, you start at the top. You start as CEO, and you start expand, building a network. You start identifying other people who want to be entrepreneurs, and then you start training those entrepreneurs, like you said. Well, this is, what, this is what really bugs me about the people who don't know about network marketing. They call it a pyramid scheme. Well, corporate America is a pyramid scheme. You know what I mean? It goes like this. You have thousands of MBAs, you know, let's say working for Ford or General Motors or Coca-Cola. If all these MBAs, they're all trying to get to here, that's a pyramid. Only one guy's going to make it. You know, every 10 years, one's going to make it. Whereas you look at network market, it's like this. So you're here, and your job is to develop other CEOs coming up behind you. So it's an inverse pyramid. You know, that's what I write in my books. I say it's really the corporate America scheme is pyramid scheme. Network marketing is really a scheme of developing future entrepreneurs. That's why it's successful. It's the spirit that it comes behind of it. I think uh, network marketing, because of this, I think society and uh, the, the, the direction of our country and many places around the world is forcing people to look at entrepreneurial decisions again. Yeah. Business of the 21st century. Hey, sports fans, industrial age is over. It's dead. It's dying. That's why going to school to get a job is an obsolete idea. A steady paycheck is an industrial age idea. You know, back in 1904, there was a man named John D. Rockefeller who created the Educational Board of America, General Education Board. The purpose of the General Education Board was not to teach people to be rich. The general education boards would take farmers who were entrepreneurs and convert them into employees who would work for a paycheck. And that's what happened in 1904. And today our school still has no financial education when they have entrepreneurs program is taught by people who are not really entrepreneurs. They're executives who think they have the entrepreneur spirit. But entrepreneurs really don't need a job, don't need a paycheck, they have a good spirit. And you have to have a kind spirit today. That's the business of the 21st century. Let me ask you one more question. Is because the entrepreneurial spirit has been trained out of many generations. Starting at school. Starting in school. Go to school, got a job, work for that paycheck. Work for the paycheck. <laughs> um, and people are looking to this. It's, it's, it's a scary concept. They've been trained that that is risky. That's the scary path. You could lose everything, even though people in other paths lose everything all, every day. Um, some people might think that there's just not room for all these entrepreneurs out there. You know, the, 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 all, all the entrepreneurial seats might have been taken. Um, is there space for, you know, how, how much entrepreneur, how much space is there for entrepreneurial spirit to rise up? in the world today? Well, anybody who thinks there's, there's not enough, that's the problem, you know what I mean? I, I always look at this. Look at a comedian. That guy comes up with a new joke every day, you know? He doesn't say, well, I'm out of jokes, you know? And you look at the number of guys, you know, these kids in bands playing music and all that, they don't say, well, the Beatles took every song possible. You know, so they go and create more. So the human spirit with human creativity we can always create more and more and more rather than try and screw, screw, screw the guy on the side. So I'm very optimistic that the entrepreneurial spirit will actually create heaven on earth or the Garden of Eden or prosperity for everybody. But we've got to stop this idea that there's one A student and one F student, that one person is smarter than the other. 
You know, we all have different skills, we all have different problems, we have all different stuff. But let's treat every other human being with respect and dignity and know that they have a gift to give. You know, my gift was not found in school. You know, I didn't like school. I survived it, I have a Bachelor of Science, went to a great school, but that's not my gift. Like, you won't find my gift with a guitar. You don't want me singing, you know, be happy I don't sing. But I do have a gift because I do study economics and I understand it. I can make it simple enough for somebody to understand. That's what I do, that's all I do. So, and then I can encourage people to be entrepreneurs. So if, uh, if your, one of your good friends comes to you and says, listen, you understand entrepreneurship better than anybody I know. I'm looking at getting involved in a network marketing company, uh, but I don't know the questions to ask. I don't know the things to, to research. I don't know how to, to choose a company. What advice would you give them on how to make a really good choice on, on uh, picking a network marketing company? It's the same thing you would choose if you're going to a good school. I want to know what kind of programs they have for education, development, training, stuff like this. You see, I went to, you know, I could have gone to Joe Schmo Flying School, but I chose the U.S. Navy Flying School in Pensacola, Florida, because it was the best school in the world. In my opinion, better than Air Force, because we, because we have to hit carriers. And that's why I went, I went looking for the best school, the best teachers, and the best curriculum. It's the same thing when you interview a network marketing company. You want to find out how concerned are they about my education, my training, and my development. Will they give me the space to screw up, to fail, to say I'm afraid, to tell the truth about what's going on with me? You know, is it a safe space? Or is it, is it like corporate America where you say, well, I'm so afraid they get fired. You know, I can't do it, get fired. It's got to give you a space so that the entrepreneur you can grow. Like a baby learning to walk and then run the ride a bicycle, the entrepreneur has to grow. And that's what you're looking for. Is there a space for me to grow? Most important question. Love it. That is our conversation with Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. If you haven't read that book, get your hands on that book. I'd highly recommend it.